oh boy, our freedom is so precious. We take it for granted sometimes, don't we? Well, there are terrible places in the world where they measure freedom by the ounce. It's so rare. Pakistan is one of those places. There was a minister there named Shabazz Badi, a political minister who was a Christian minority in Pakistan. He was assassinated this March. And joining me today in studio is his brother, Peter Badi. Thank you for being here today. You're welcome, sir. My condolences on the loss of your brother. What a terrible personal tragedy, but a political uh, call for help from a country where minorities are under siege. Tell me about your brother. What did he stand for and why was he killed? Uh, he was the human rights champion and he wanted to bring the equality for all uh, communities in Pakistan. How many Christians, what percentage of Pakistan is Christian or other religious minority? Uh, which is the government census they are saying about 3.25 or something, but our our uh, calculation is more than that. Almost eight to ten percent religious minorities of Pakistan. Eight to ten percent, yeah. and and you're a Christian, and obviously your brother yeah. was as well. Yeah. Did your brother win elected office, or was he appointed uh, to his position? In our system, that uh, minorities have special seat, and he was appointed by the president and prime minister of Pakistan. And what did he try and do while in that position? Was he was his job to protect minorities and to defend them? What was his mission in government? Yes, uh, he has a vision that in the Pakistan everybody should be equal citizen without caste, creed, and religion. And this was the vision of uh, founder of Pakistan, Qaeda, the Muhammad Ali Jinnah. He wanted to fulfill the vision of himself and founder of Pakistan, Muhammad Ali Jinnah, that in the state has nothing to do with religion. Everybody has free to go their mosque and temple or church or wherever worship of place. But uh, unfortunately, after the uh, death of uh, Muhammad Ali Jinnah, who was the founder of Pakistan, the other rulers uh, prolonged their rule. They introduced other laws, discriminatory laws, which was affected, especially the religious minorities of Pakistan. And my brother want to bring equality to all the communities, all the religion, to be an equal citizen of Pakistan. That's why his mission. And is that why he was assassinated? Yes, and because uh, uh, forces of Taliban and violence always uh, threaten him that uh, you have to stop their uh, agenda, otherwise we can get killed, you can get killed. But he said, doesn't matter what I have to pay the price, I want to live with my community, I want to die for my community. And, and who he, killed him? Who killed him in the end? For our, uh, uh, we cannot uh, for specifically say that who killed, but those people are against Pakistan, those are involved in terrorism, those are uh, in pro-Taliban al-Qaeda, these people killed him. Now, you're a Canadian, you've been here for a number of years. Yeah. Uh, but your brother had a connection in Canada too. He was friends with Jason Kenney, an immigration minister, a friend of this show, and a friend, frankly, of human rights around the world. Yeah. Jason Kenney has proposed an office of religious freedom that would look outside of Canada, that would help religious minorities in places like Pakistan and Egypt and other places. Uh, I know that your brother talked to Jason about these things. What is your information? Is, is this the kind of thing that would help uh, minorities in Pakistan, do you, do you think that this is the kind of thing that would support your brother's mission? Yes, definitely it is a great idea. And uh, before I talk further, I would like to be um, thankful to our right honorable Prime Minister Stephen Harper and also Jason Kenney that they put a lot of efforts to bring uh, and highlight these issues. And the establishment of a religious freedom office will make a big difference for the religious minorities of Pakistan well, let me and ask around you, the world. Yeah. And now, yeah. that's the goal, and yeah. I totally support that goal. Yeah. How would it work, though? I mean, Pakistan isn't the freest place. It's a, it's a place in a, almost a civil war situation. How can an office here in Canada actually make a difference on the ground in places like Pakistan or in dictatorships like Egypt? Uh, yes, uh, there are several ways to be may uplift the religious minorities of Pakistan. They can continue dialogue with war and terrorism to support Pakistan. They can economically uplift the religious minorities of Pakistan, those 
for example, poor class citizens, main problem of uh, persecution and uh, victimization is the poverty. If people get educated, they have good job, they are established themselves, there will be less, there will be less chances to be persecuted. So Canada can be play a big role to uplift the religious minorities of Pakistan economically, socially, and also uh, it can help uh, to the government with war and terror. Those people, forces of uh, violence are active in Pakistan. They, with the dialogue of uh, both countries, they can uh, reduce the pressure of the extremism there. It seems to me that one of the roles this office could play is to just simply speak truth to power, simply speak the truth that our Foreign Affairs Department has not done before. That's easier said than done, though. I mean, right now our country is being bullied by Saudi Arabia. They're picking on broadcasting when our government isn't even speaking out in that case. Do you think it's realistic that this Office of Religious Freedom will be able to criticize governments like in Pakistan and Egypt if our Foreign Affairs Department is too cowardly to do so? Yes, somebody has to stand for the truth, and I think Canada is ready to do uh, to stand for the truth and ready to talk to those people. Those are violent uh, for the terrorism and uh, religious persecution there. Well, I hope you're right. Yeah. Now, do you have any other family members back in Pakistan right now? Yes, my elder brother is the advisor to Prime Minister. He's taking, um, working on the place from where my late brother was there. So you, yeah. you, one of your brothers has taken the role of, Shab of your brother. Bhatti, yeah. And what's, your, what's the brother who has taken the role? What's his name? Dr. Paul Bhatti. Dr. Yeah. Paul Bhatti. Now, is, is, he in, is he in jeopardy as well? What's, does he have a security detail? Has he had threats on his life? Yes, uh, we feel that the whole of our family is uh, under threat. And what are you doing about it? Are you trying to emigrate? Are you trying to leave Pakistan? Or are you going to stay and fight? No, we are You're want, here, but yes. what about your family there? Yes, uh, we want to stay there and fight there to, because if everybody who want, he, if he want to get out from there, who will stand for the, those people Those don't have voice? Yeah. So somebody has to stand that one. And this is our family commitment. I already committed several places. When Shabazz Finder was there, Mr. Kenny was there, I made first time commitment there. And I want to repeat my commitment there. Whatever price we have to pay for to uplift the religious minorities of Pakistan, we are ready to pay. And, um, and we will not give up. And we don't want to leave the legacy of our brother in vain. And we will continue on that one. That's our commitment uh, for that. Peter, thank you very much for joining us today. Again, my condolences for the heavy price your family has paid for your fight for freedom. You're welcome. Thank Folks, you. don't go.